Physical examination of the newborn is intended to detect congenital anomalies of the musculoskeletal system or to reassure concerned parents that their offspring is healthy. Prior to the examination, a family, prenatal and birth history should be taken that may alert the examiner to specific problems. The examination should be performed from head to toe with the naked baby lying supine in a warm room with no direct light shining on the face. In this video, we'll be looking specifically at examination of the spine, hips and feet for common neonatal orthopedic conditions which require specialist referral. Turn the baby onto its stomach to examine the back, including the skin of the lower back and buttocks. Inspect the back for abnormal spinal curvature and midline abnormalities such as a meningocele, sacral sinus, hypertrichosis, which is a hairy patch of skin, or areas of hyper or hypopigmentation, which may be indicative of spina bifida. Now place the infant supine and assess the hip joints with the diaper removed. Note that examination of the hips should not be done in preterm infants. To test hip stability, perform the Ortolani and Barlow maneuvers. This is important in the diagnosis of developmental dysplasia of the hip, which will be briefly discussed later. For the Ortolani maneuver, grip each thigh between a thumb and forefinger so that both hips are flexed to 90 degrees and the knees are fully bent. Abduct the hips as fully as possible. The infant's thighs should reach the underlying surface. If there is a limitation of abduction, this is a positive Ortolani sign, that is, indicating congenital dislocation of the hip. For the Barlow maneuver, grip a thigh between the thumb and forefinger and hold it in mid abduction with the hip and the knee flexed. Use your other hand to stabilize the pelvis. Rock the head of the femur between the thumb and the forefinger while exerting downward pressure. A positive Barlow sign occurs when a loose hip can be pushed out of the socket with gentle pressure. In short, Barlow goes back and Ortolani goes out. Barlow goes back and Ortolani goes out. In the event that you find hip instability, one should think about DDH. This refers to idiopathic hip dysplasia and includes hip dislocation at birth and acetabular dysplasia. High-risk patients include those with a positive family history, female gender, oligohydramnios, firstborn breach, Barlow positive hip, and any suspicious hip. More sensitive than clinical examination is an ultrasound done at six weeks, but this is not routinely available in South Africa. AP pelvic radiography, which is only accurate after six weeks, should be done to aid in diagnosis. On x-ray, specific lines can be drawn to define the relationship of the proximal femur to the developing pelvis. hilgen reiner line is drawn horizontally through the superior aspect of both triadiate cartilages. Perkin line is drawn perpendicular to hilgen reiner line, intersecting the lateral most aspect of the acetabular roof. The upper femoral epiphysis should be seen in the inframedial quadrant, that is, below Hilgenreiner line and medial to Perkin line. In DDH, the acetabular angle or index will be more than 20 degrees. Shenton's line is a curved line that can be drawn along the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus and along the inframedial border of the femoral neck. In DDH, there is a clear disruption of this curve. Treatment for DDH in neonates is a pavlic harness. It is used to treat a dislocated hip and prevents a Trendelenburg short leg limp. The harness holds the infant's hips in flexion and abduction but allows mobility. This device aims to stabilize the hip and stimulate acetabulum development. Examine the feet for club foot, that is, congenital telepe equinovarus. There are four combined deformities with varying magnitude and immobility. These can easily be remembered through the acronym CAVE. C for cavus of the midfoot, 
A for a deduction of the forefoot, V for varus of the hind foot, and E for equinus of the ankle, C for cavus of the midfoot, A for a deduction of the forefoot, V for varus of the hind foot, and E for equinus of the ankle. Early referral is important in that treatment should be ideally started in the first few days of life through the use of serial plasters. There are, however, feet that may have features of club foot but are due to in utero moulding and are not true club feet. They can be passively corrected. That concludes our orthopaedic neonatal examination. Ensure that a full neonatal examination is done, including a neurological assessment and anthropometric measurements.